What's up, y'all? Talon here, coming at you very late at night with the first large Regulation G tournament. So this was a tour hosted by Hemi Turner, uh, a $1,000 prize pool Regulation H tournament before the World Championship. So Regulation H is going to probably kick up into full effect after Worlds, which is happening the weekend, uh, this upcoming weekend of the 16th through the 18th, I believe. But after that, a lot of top players are going to be hitting it hard for the Baltimore Regionals coming up a month after Worlds. So this is the first large tournament, although it doesn't have a lot of, uh, you know, every top player's eyes on it because they are prepping for the World Championship in Regulation G. This is, um, for everyone not going to Worlds, the largest tournament for this new format. And everyone's really excited about it, so it's the first time for people to really showcase some of their cool ideas and see what is really strong in this format with a large amount of money on the line, so people are not going to be holding anything back. Going to be hopping into the analysis now, but uh, show your support to Hemi by following him on Twitter, as well as subscribing to him and following him on Twitch. He put on a really impressive tournament. The stream went off without really any hitches, lots of player streamings, no dead time, uh, with a lot of entertainment from the casters. Uh, shout out to Big Slim, Nino, Chuppa, Hemi, Weekly R, and uh, Eric B. So yeah, definitely check them out. I'll have their socials linked in the description below. They're all talented casters, so definitely expect to see more from them. And yeah, let's hop into a breakdown of the teams now. So starting off with the first place team, we have Sinki. Uh, this is Austin Ramos, a older Texas player, uh, definitely one of the older friends I have in the scene. Really great guy. Uh, excited to see him take it in this first tournament. He was really strong in restricted formats, uh, particularly I remember playing him in 2017. Beat me very hard then. Uh, 2014 was one of his stronger years as well. Just a very experienced and strong player, even though not a household name due to kind of inactivity in recent years, definitely very capable in his own right. So we're going to look at the team now. Uh, so basically, get used to seeing this. We have Mousehold and Annihilate. The safety goggles is a really strong option against the prevalent Amoongus and other Rage Powder, powder users in the format. Uh, you're able to go for beat up and give your Rage Fist four stacks of boost, making it, I believe, a 250 base power move. Just insane power right off the bat. Uh, Annihilate extremely strong against Incineroar, although Incineroar on its own is a very powerful Pokemon in this format. We see it on Austin's team here. Um, it is very weak against Annihilate. You give it a defiant, a defiant boost and then Drain Punch can potentially knock you out. If you uh, go defensive enough, you won't be able to, but you also just have Follow Me and Taunt on Mousehold, so they can't go for anything like Will-O-Wisp against you very easily. So yeah, I do think Annihilate going to be here to stay in this format, probably one of the a or S tier Pokemon uh, to be preparing for in the early format. The probably S tier Pokemon of this tournament is actually Archaladon. So this format doesn't have a lot of extremely powerful Pokemon that can chip down Archaladon quickly. So you can rack up stamina boost and hit really hard with body press. Austin has beat up on this team, so he can beat up the Annihilate and the Archaladon, uh, giving it a plus four defense boost, really powering up its body press to astronomical levels. If your opponent's team relies on physical attacks, and it's just so hard to knock out the Archaladon. Uh, also, the bulk from Friend Guard, very beneficial to the Mousehold and the Annihilate. The Arch uh, can basically set up, it's not going for bulk ups, but, but with Electroshot, it's basically setting up while also doing a lot of damage in the Rain, which is the Pelipper is providing. Austin ran a Terra Stellar Pelipper, which is pretty common this tournament. Um, the boost on the Weather Ball, Pelipper doesn't have a lot of power, but in this format where there's not a lot of extremely strong defensive Pokemon, and the few that do are things that are usually weak to either Weather Ball or Incineroar outside of our challenge on itself. Uh, sometimes you can just pop the Stellar Terra and take a quick one at KO against your opponent's main defensive option, and that's very cool. The standout Pokemon on the team, I think, is the Sinistra. The main usage for it on the team is the uh, Rage Powder, an additional follow me Pokemon after the Mouse Hold goes for beat up or follow me and goes down. You have another Rage Powder user to protect the Annihilate or even the Archaladon. And then... Uh, Really, it's the hospitality. If your Annihilate takes any damage from a uh, spread move or something around your Follow Me early on, or the Archaladon in kind similarly, you can switch in the Sinistra, go for hospitality, the passive uh, ability that's just going to heal it by 25%, and then it's really, really difficult to deal with, especially if you get the Sinistra in and out a couple of times in the battle. That kind of healing, you're not most teams aren't prepared for on the Archaladon in particular, so it's a really cool strategy. Congrats to Austin. For innovating on this team and just taking it to the first big one in win of this format just to get it out of the way i do want to look at all the teams uh just looking from the top view we see a pelper in first second uh four so dominating in the top four as well as the rest of the tournament really the cut was really proliferated with a lot of pelper rain basque legion having some big finishes as well and then if you go down a little bit less but we see some palafin pelper yeah i think pelper uh, rising to be one of the dominant pokemon of the format at least as a supporter and i think that isn't really surprising but yeah definitely 
Rain going to be the dominant archetype starting out in regulation G. Looking at the second place team, Brady Smith, very accomplished player himself, running a bit of a different variation of Rain with no Annihilate. So Brady also has the Pelipper, the Archaladon, a Rage Powder Grass type in Amoongus, but this one can heal a little bit more with Pollen Puff, but you don't do it passively on the ability. Uh, pretty distinct. Uh, the Incineroar, pretty similar, but takes a bit of a more defensive uh, setup oriented approach with the Grimmsnarl being able to really only just set up screens and go for parting shots early on. The uh, focus of this team is definitely more pivot heavy than Austin's. He's going for the screens early, parting shot out into the Amoongus potentially to go for pollen puffs and just become really difficult to deal with. A, an, Amoongus an Amoongus behind screens is going to be so hard to knock out with this format's power level, so I do like that a lot. It also benefits the Goldengo immensely, so Goldengo um, going for two steel types on this team. I think a lot of people ended up going this route, whereas Austin went for the Annihilate, a bit more well-rounded, but steel types in rain, very difficult to knock out because the fire type damage that would normally be super effective against them is halved in power so the goldengo very easily able to set up go for nasty plots behind screens have amoongus for cover fire with rage powder put stuff to sleep and then we also have fake out on incense so kind of typically really what we would expect from a rain team early in the format except no strong water type abuser outside of the pelper and then a grim snarl in place so a bit more defensive take on rain than i was expecting to see do well this early in the format in third place another old school player david mancuso one of the strongest players in 2014 i had mentioned austin really strong at 2014 i believe uh david also probably then i don't think we had championships points back then i'm not entirely sure but david was probably pretty close to number one uh looking at his team it is another annihilate team uh similar set beat up safety goggles and then the Annihilate is a Terra Fire one, so you're not getting Will-O-Wisp, whereas the Water one is a little better defensively against all the Rain teams in the format. Uh, Pre-Marina, I do think we're going to see a lot of in the format. The Basically, the power on Mystic Water Liquid Voice is pretty high. I don't think that's going to be the strongest item on it necessarily, but Haze is a very potent option. If you have it on the Tailwind team, you can potentially EV your Pre-Marina to outspeed Don Dozo, and in Tailwind, just get the Haze off and really neutralize that strategy. Generally, the pace of this team is going to be set up the Annihilate early. Uh, you can neutralize Dondozos with Pre-Marina. That does seem to be a trend, just Annihilate plus really dedicated Dondozo hate because that's one of the things that can handle Annihilate pretty well. And then, yeah, basically get your Rage Fist stacks up, maybe a bulk up, get Tailwind up, and then sweep your opponent's team with the Annihilate, and then potentially the Blood Moon Ursulunas. Uh, this one is a bit speedier, so yeah, just able to sweep in Tailwind as well. In fourth place, we have Abdullah Mohayuddin. Uh, Sempra got fourth at Worlds in 2023. A, I, it was actually top eight, I believe, but yeah, a very impressive uh, player from Canada. He was using a very similar similar rain team. The same core of Pelper, Amoongus, and Cinero are going to be a dominant Firewater Grass defensive core, the Archaladon, which is probably the most broken Pokemon in the format, at least early on, until we can figure out some answers. Basque Legion with Choice Band is just dealing crazy damage it's essentially palafin but you don't have to switch in and out which is why a lot of people are favoring it as their rain sweeper of choice and then instead of the goldengo that brady favored we have a king gambit again it's going to be setting up but this one is a swords dance um so a lot bulkier and generally can stick around a bit better than goldengo but you do have to um you're a little worse into archaladon which can boost up with stamina and kind of just like outpace you and also force terrestrializations out with body press so not I think of the three main steel types in the format, I think King, Gam King Gambit might be the weakest overall. Um, I think our Chalon is definitely the strongest. It's probably going to... We'll see how the metagame develops around King Gambit and Goldengo, but they're both very strong and should probably be on most people's teams regardless. So glad to see um, Sempra picking it up and getting a high placing here. The fifth place team, very similar to Sempra's, except the Salamence over the Incineroar. So again, an Intimidate Pokemon, but a lot more offensive. This one is Choice Scarf. I think Terra Flying Hurricane, so definitely a solid late game sweeper. I do want to talk about this team. It's a very cool team. A lot, got a lot of things that might not be necessarily standard, but all are just uniquely strong. So you have a Draining Kiss, Triage, Comfy, which can heal the Annihilate with Floral Healing. It's a weakness policy one. So you can activate the weakness policy in either Terra or not Terra, and then also give it a Rage Fist boost and a yeah plus two attack, which is going to be pretty similar in power to a beat up. So that's cool. You also have beat up on the Mouse hold on this team. Uh, and then kind of the most interesting thing, the zoom rule is cool, uh, but not that crazy. I'm not sure if it'll be necessarily stronger than Pre-Marina generally, but it does obviously have some strengths here getting top eight in a very large tournament. The Salazzle is very interesting. Poison Gas uh, has been picking up on some Regulation G uh, Don Dozo teams, but 
not entirely sure of the application here. It's a lot more fast paced of a, pace of a team. So I don't love poison gas necessarily outside of breaking focus ashes, but dragon cheer is very cool. You have it to make annihilate crit. So you can crit through a Don Dozo's boost. Uh, I guess that'll be 50% of the time. And then High Dragon with the scope lens after you get the Dragon Cheer off will be critting 100% of the time. And the strategy here is to go for Draco Meteor with no drawback. You're always hitting at basically uh, plus one because of the crits, and you never get the you never face the drawback of the minus two boosts, minus two drops because you're always critting through them anyways. I want to talk about this team in top eight. Uh, it's basically triple setup with Coldango, Volcarona, and High Dragon. High Dragon really going to be a lot of people's Don Dozo answers on its own. Just get some redirection in front of it and then go for Focus, Ener Dra Focus Energy Draco Meteor to take a one hit KO or at least very close to it. What I do want to point out is the Clefable. So I thought Clefairy was going to be the stronger of the two this format, but it's proving that Unaware Clefable is seeming to be pretty solid because you can ignore uh, the setup boosters and the format. Goldengo, you're going to have to tear it away from the steel weakness regardless, but that's fine. Um, and yeah, basically the Unaware is also just very good get, good against Don Dozo. So you can follow me, take a wave crash, especially if you go for Terra Water, and that's essentially going to be a solid Don Dozo answer in and of itself. I also want to point out the Paldean Tor Tauros Aqua, which was really picking up usage towards the end of the first Series A tournaments, and people are saying this is basically Series A+, plus. so I think we're going to see a lot of Tauros early on, or at least doing well. I think it's a Pokemon that a lot of top players are looking at as one of the premier defensive water types in the format, and glad to see it take an early uh, top 8 here. The last team in top 8 has a Hisuian Zoroark, and I think it's a really interestingly built team. So Hisuian Zoroark is a normal ghost type, which means it has a uh, immunity to fighting type moves and ghost type moves which is kind of interesting so you can lead it in place of the mouse hold and people will go for a fighting type move into it or try to and then you'll be immune uh, surprise surprise you can also lead it with in front of the annihilate or the goldengo people will go for a ghost move into it and surprise surprise you're immune so there's a lot of cool stuff you can do there to set up a nasty plot and go for a terra stellar terror blast i'm not really sure uh, i guess that's always going to be super effective or at least neutrally effective on stuff especially if they don't terra and then you have Bitter Malice, which is, I believe, a Ghost-type move, 75 base power. Not that strong, but always lowers the target's attack by one stage. So that's kind of interesting. Garganackle won the first Series A regional, uh, GC Oak Lee. I was able to kind of just show that it was really, really strong beyond the Iron Defense Body Press stuff people were doing. The Wide Guard, wide guard Salt Cure Recover was sufficient as offense. Uh, really good against Don Dozo if you're able to have a defensive Terra, because most of them are either were either Terra Water or Terra Steel, so... Salt Cure is just a generally cool chippy tactic. I'm not entirely sure how strong it is. Uh, this format we will see, but it's a cool Goldengo answer as well because you can go for uh, Wide Guard in front of the Make It Rains and you have Purifying Salt to resist the Ghost type move, moves if you ever catch them nasty plotting and hit a Salt Cure. That's 25% damage every term, turn and most of them are Terra Water or Terra Steel. So that's, you know, they can't really tear out of that. So it's a really cool Pokemon. Hope, hoping to see more of it there. And then they have a Choice Spec Goldengo here. Goldengo, like I said, one of the top three steel types in the format, going to be on most every team. You're going to see one of the three. And here we have a, I believe the first Specs Goldengo. I think that's very strong in a format where Annihilate is trying to set up, um, you know, not taking a turn to try to match it, especially if they're faster. You're kind of playing a weird speed, speed roll. Sometimes just going for the Terra Steel, make it rain, knocking out the mouse hold and doing almost a full knockout to the, the Annihilate can be pretty cool, or at least force the Terra to Terra Water or Terra Fire. So looking at the rest of the cut, the top 16, we have Hendez with a pretty similar team to what we've seen before, just a Fire Water Grass Core defensive, the Haze Primarina, and then double setup. Um, we have Kian Campbell with a team that feels a lot similar to what he was doing really well within Regulation B, the Mouse Hold, the Assault Vest, Terra Flying Dragonite for a really strong uh, Terra Flying Terra Blast to do a lot of damage. Basically, one of the few things in the format that can consistently knock out Amoongus. It's immune to Fake Out. It's immune to um, the Intimidate from Incineroar. So it's got a lot of utility in the defensive cores in the format. Also knocks out Rillaboom. So a great Pokemon. And then a um, relatively standard... I mean, not standard because I don't think Palafin is necessarily going to be standard. On rain teams, Basket Legion does seem to be taking the lead as the main water type sweeper. But Goldengo, Pelipper, Amoongus completing the rain core pretty typically. I do want to comment that the Palafin is Terra Grass and not Terra Water, so I think if Dondozo followed the same path that they did in the previous regulations as Hayes, Primarina, and Hayes Dondo or uh, Palafin become some of the earlier counters to it, they'll go Terra Blast, Terra Grass to knock you out, and Terra Grass covers for that, but then 
if they go tear flying, they can hit you, but then they you just don't tear in front of them. So I do think that's going to be probably the, if you're using it as a Dondozo answer, a pretty reliable check to it. Let's go into Cyrox's team, which has a Decidueye from Hisui. Very interesting. I think that Pokemon has a lot of uh, promise for reasons I'll go into next. So basically the Scrappy ability makes it able to hit a Goldango through the Ghost type and hit it super effectively with the Steel type. So you're able to hit the Terra Steel ones regardless of if they Terra with a Triple Arrows, which is a crazy move. It has like a some chance to flinch, maybe 30%, and then a 50% chance to drop your defenses by one stage and then razor claw has a increased crit chance with razor claw that becomes 50 percent every hit of triple arrows and leaf blade and then upper hand will still just be i believe one eighth but still really high uh, scrappy also makes you a semi reliable in tailwind answer to don dozo you resist wave crash earthquake and order up will do a lot um, but not necessarily a knockout and you can triple arrows if they've gone for terra steel or something you can leaf blade if they don't have terra left to get out of the grass type weakness and that's pretty cool because you can just crit through their boosts and you're not going to knock out most on dozo but you'll get pretty close just a pretty reliable game plan get tailwind up or not and then just like get a little bit of chip on the don dozo and then knock it out with leaf blade so that's pretty cool you also have haze on pre-marina throat spray a bit more offensive have a set that can ramp up in tailwind town flame looking to be along with whimsicott and murkrow the premier tailwind setters in the format we're a little um we're a little short on good Tailwind setters, so we kind of have to rely on Talonflame and Murkrow. Whimsicott is good, but not offensively very great. Same with Murkrow. So I think that is going to lessen the strength of Tailwind teams early on, that they don't have the raw power of Tornadus' Bleak Windstorm, but still very strong. Gastrodon, uh, we're going to see a lot of Gastron on defensive teams just because Rain is so powerful. Resisting or being immune to Electroshot is kind of cool. You can at least block that. They'll have to commit to a Draco Meteor or a Dragon Pulse to hit you very hard, so... That's interesting. Yawn, Recover, Earth Power, Sludge Bomb. I'm not a huge Gast Gastrodon fan, but it's definitely very annoying for rain teams to handle. Moxie came in with some heat here. Um, another rain team, but the standout Pokemon is going to be the Chestnut with Belly Drum and Grassy Glide to combo off of the Grassy Surge uh, and double fake out combo. You can double fake out, make sure you get a Belly Drum up, and then because Grassy Surge is up, you're hitting with a Stab, Grassy Terrain Boosted, plus six, uh, grassy Glide doing insane damage to everything, and then if you can't hit them with a Grassy Glide, for example, Archaladon, you can hit them with a Drain Punch and just heal up all the damage that you might have taken from first off the Belly Drum and then any additional damage that you've taken in the battle. Mars here was the highest placing Don Dozo, I believe. Uh, not Ability Shield like I kind of expected. I do think Weezing, if people continue to go Tatsugiri, uh, no Ability Shield, and Don Dozo becomes a prominent threat. Uh, if people can't answer Don Dozo sufficiently, we might see some Weezing with the neutralizing gas and then people have to go ability shield on the tatsugiri but not the case right now uh, we have the terror grass don dozo like i mentioned uh, no terror blast here so you're going to lose to the haze palafins a little bit but that's fine uh, i guess at this point you also have other options to deal with that and then beyond that just a very standard composition that i believe the don dozo players were playing as early as the first tournament in series a the palma to revival blessing your don dozo back up to 50 percent which is pretty cool lets you play a bit more aggressively with it uh, same with the goldengo you can uh, go for a make it rain tailwind earlier have the palm out in the back and not necessarily even go for the dondozo mode just try and sweep with your very powerful choice band and choice specs pokemon so strong team i uh, expect teams like this that are kind of just like ripping off of the strengths of series a team to continue being strong early format before we figure out what tools to do with them uh, especially well and what they struggle into two more teams in top 16 it is pretty late so i don't want to go into too many details of the top 32 teams but penguin brought a crazy um pledge team one of them drops all your speed by one fourth you can see that a lot of the team is built around that they're not very fast Hisui and Decidueye, Sylveon, Hisui and Arcanine, Indeedee, Primarina, Meowskarada is the only fast Pokemon and basically the way pledge mechanics work is the Pokemon that uses the pledge first the other Pokemon if they use the same a pledge move that turn moves immediately after so Meowskarada being one of the fastest Pokemon in the format is very cool. The power of the pledge, I believe, is based on the second Pokemon to move. So if you lead the Meowskarada Primarina, you go for the Life Orb uh, Water Pledge second, which is going to do a lot more damage than the uh, Grass Pledge would do off the Meowskarada's special attack. So yeah, I think the general intent of the team is just get the speeds of the opponents dropped, go for things like Twisted Spoon Expanding Force from Ndidi, which is a very cool element uh, you have in prison to stop Trick Room teams, and then beyond that, just go for really strong spread and single target attacks with the Hisuian Arcanine and the Sylveon and sweep from there. Last team in the top 16, we have the first Murkrow sighting, the Haze Dondozo uh, answer. You're just able to go for Prankster as soon as the Dondozo 
has that active, you go for Haze, they can't get Trick Room, or they can't keep the boosts up. It's a lot worse in that situation. Then we have Tyranitar, Lycanroc. Lycanroc is really annoying because we hate that Urshifu is gone, but it was one of the things keeping Lycanroc in check. Something that could reliably resist a Rock Slide and go for a Surging Strikes to knock it out through Sash. Um, because it is so fast with Rock Slide, you can go for that. If you get one flinch and the opponent goes for an attack into the Lycanroc, you're at Focus Sash, you can go for Endeavor. That's really, really annoying. And honestly, if you go for double Rock Slide, the odds are actually in your favor for the opponents not to move. So that can be really difficult to deal with after you go for the Endeavor. If they are immune to Sand, you can go for a Cell Rock or another Rock Slide. So it's really hard to deal with. Outside of that, we see another Hisuian Decidueye. This one's Life Orb, not Razor Claw, which is kind of interesting, but it looks like a lot of these are functioning in Tailwind teams. Clefable as your alternative setup or Dondozo answer with the Unaware. And then Hydreigon uh, as a kind of bulky Pokemon with Snarl to deal with opposing uh, Psy Spam teams, for example, like a um, Hisuian Braviary, which is a rising Expanding Force user, as well as Trick Room teams. The bulky Aguaf Berry Snarl Hydreigon can be pretty cool against that, as well as Snarl against um, things like Archaladon to keep the special attack low there. I'm going to do brief rundowns of the top 32 teams. Joe just has a very, uh, this is a, I believe, a Tailwind Hydreigon. I'm not exactly sure. It could be Focus Energy, but... Generally, just a very bulky uh, pivoty team trying to get the Palafin to its hero form, as well as a Calm Mind Sylveon, I believe. This is a Trick Room team basically focused on setting up the Volcarona as a secondary mode, but going for Dusclops, getting into Trick Room, and sweeping with the Ursula the Blood Moon and the Araquanid, which is a very strong Pokemon. Um, newer players might not know, but the Water Bubble makes its Water type tax do insane damage, and we have Haze Dondozo to deal with things like Intimidate, trying to lower the power of liquidation as well as deal with Don Dozo. Muck is here again. Basically you're going for minimize um, and basically swapping Moody from Smeargle going for follow me to make sure it gets knocked out. And then through power of alchemy, the Muck gets the Moody boost. You're trying to pass those boosts to the Flamigo through Co-Star, which has white herbs who only get the positive boost, which is pretty cool. And then psych up on the Sylveon or the Espeon means you have plus evasion, uh, plus you know, probably a lot of boosts, and then you can psych that up, and you're sweeping with a boosted Flamigo and potentially the Espeon, or at least that's the intention, with all the haze in the format that does seem kind of suspect. Daniel Acorn with what looks like a pretty standard team. The Tailwind Murkrow can haze away your Goldengos. If your choice specs, you can just lock into Terra Steel, make it rain plus Tailwind, and then the next turn you can go for haze to get rid of the drops. That's very cool. Um, another rain team looks very similar to Austin's team, except the Murkrow and the Rillaboom, so no Sinistra, and then I forget what the last Pokemon was, but yeah, Murkrow to deal with Dondozo a bit more aggressively. Here is the Hisuian Braviary that I was talking about. Double redirect, Redirection plus Double Setup Steel types on Rain seems to be pretty strong. Um, and then it, the Hisuian Braviary as kind of a mix-up, a bit more offensive with Tinted Lens. You can't, basically anything that resists the its moves becomes neutral, so that's pretty cool. Uh, unless it, you have a four times resist, and then it'll just become a one half resist but still a really good ability for spamming a spread type attack Vio phoenix running what looks like a very defensive team honestly it kind of looks like an alberto lara team just with the gastron amungus king gambit core gonna be really hard to knock out uh, we also have the tauros as an interesting fire type i'm not sure if that's the mirror herb that won that was the most popular in series a to basically copy the king gambit's boost and just like run amok uh, but beyond that just a very sound defensive team we have tanner mask running a Team very similar to one that won the EUIC with the Porygon, Ursluna, Terraflying, uh, Earthquake combination, the Amoongus, Incineroar as a defensive core, and then Goldango and Palafin as alternative offensive modes. Pretty cool. We have Dondozo, Tatsugiri, Dragonite, Goldango going to be some of the strongest partners for the Dondozo. And then we have a Whimsicott as the Tailwind Setter and Glamora. Glamora was picking up in Regulation B more so, but also in Regulation A it was pretty strong. The... Uh, toxic debris getting set up the mortal spin means you can run a stallier defensive dondozo and just like whittle people's hp that way we also have meteor beam as a mix-up with the tailwind whimsicott now so that makes it even more threatening so i do think that's a smart adaptation commenting on this really interesting double ev poke team we have jolteon on espion on a sun team basically the ndd can go for cute trick room um, options for the torkoal but the rest of the team is pretty quick it's a choice specs jolteon with terra fighting so you can go for cute Terra Fighting, uh, Terra Blast into Archaladon for a lot of damage, knock out Mousehold as well, as well as go for really strong Volt Switches to switch in and out. And then we have the Espeon, which is kind of interesting. Basically, the goal here is to go for Weather Ball, as well as just strong Psychic-type moves. It's an interesting option, as well as Expanding Force. It's basically a 
Sunsweeper expanding force user that is not um, Armor Rouge, which is, which is kind of interesting. We'll see if that sticks, but yeah, cool team there. The last team I want to cover is this team uh, in 31st place. It's very interesting. It has a Ludicolo with no rain. Let me find that. Yeah, with Assault Vest and Terra Steel Terra Blast, which is like cool against fairy types, really strong against Sylveon or anything like that. I'm not entirely sure what it's for, to be honest. And then a Trick Room Mode with Furograph, Blood Moon, Arsaluna. Haven't seen a lot of that, which I'm kind of surprised at because it was able to thrive in higher power level formats, but seems to be not doing that well early on. Not sure if that will stick, but the Ludicolo doing well is kind of interesting. It just kind of speaks to how strong all the rain teams are in this format that Ludicolo was able to do well it basically when it can't use its ability when it's not playing a rain team. So I think it was um, basically indicative that rain is going to be very dominant. Even taking an entire slot on your team to beat those rain teams could be kind of important moving forward. So that is going to do it for my coverage of the first regulation H tournament held by Himmy Turner. Uh, follow him on Twitter. I'll have that linked in the description as well as the standings so you can look at all the open team sheets from this tournament and, you know, export them to Pokemon Showdown. Start playing uh, before and after the World Championship. Hope you guys enjoyed this analysis. If you guys enjoy these videos, please subscribe to the channel, leave a like, and tell me what your favorite team was from the tournament, what you expect to do well in future tours as well. And yeah, with all that being said, peace y'all.